How does your favorite story end? Wait, first, how does your favorite story begin? In a world where a kid who has something to learn, something to discover, this kid finds unexpected friends. They head out on an adventure and face some tough challenges. Then when things are the darkest, when all hope seems lost, something, someone, comes through to save the day. And everyone celebrates! Now, think about this. We are hardwired to love stories because each one of us is living one. We're all human and we all make mistakes. But sometimes the road ahead can be so rough, we don't know how to fix the problems we face. But we do know the times we've seen God at work. We know he sent a hero right into the middle of our story, God's own son, Jesus. And we know that when we follow Jesus, God promised an ending more incredible than anything we can imagine. Wherever we go, he goes with us too. When we live out our story with hope and faith, others can see God at work in us. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hi there. Who remembers our theme for the month? Faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Last week we learned that Jesus is a gift for everyone. And God's grace means that salvation is a gift. You can't earn it, you can't buy it. In today's story, we're gonna hear about Paul again and how he shared God's gift of salvation with others.
everybody? <sighs> Erica here, and welcome back to another week in the STEAM Lab! <laughs> Whenever you're learning new things, experimenting, inventing, or anything else one might do in a lab, you need to make sure you have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And you also have to have something to work with. Today, I asked a few people to let me borrow their glasses for the day. Cheers! Just kidding! Eyeglasses, not water glasses. <laughs> I see you! Uh, uh. Okay, these are reading glasses. They're supposed to help you see things better close up. Let's see. Oh, wow! Yep! They really work. I see things a lot more clearly. It's like, it's like, it's like focused. Blurry. Focus! Blurry. But look what happens when I put on these glasses. They're for someone who is really farsighted. Wow! I can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like blurry, blurry. Focus, focus. Blurry, blurry. Focus. Isn't that wild? There are a lot of different kinds of glasses. And the reason is because there are a lot of different kinds of people. Not everyone sees the same way. And today's story is about when a guy named Paul met some people who saw things a little bit differently than he did. Go see for yourself. You, you, see, what I, you see what I did there? Ah. Okay. Meanwhile, I've got some more glasses to try on. Whoa. <gasps> These are X-ray glasses. I can see my bones! Just kidding. <laughs> Seriously though, when did I get that freckle? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. Wherever Paul went, he boldly preached the good news of Jesus. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Many Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus, but in nearly every town, a group of Jews would gather to oppose Paul. He and his companions were forced out of Thessalonica, and then later that same group of Jews followed to run Paul out of Berea. Eventually, the believers helped Paul escape to the coast, where he could travel by boat to Athens. Tell Silas and Timothy to join me as soon as they can. Once Paul reached Athens, he walked the streets of the ancient city, disturbed by what he saw, carved and molded statues everywhere. Statues of their gods. The people really believe false gods can help them. In fact, the Athenians believed in around 30,000 false gods. Yeah, they believed these gods were in charge of everything from uh, sports to sleep to doors and cleanliness. A god of grapes, okay. While Paul waited for his friends, he visited the Jewish synagogue to tell Jews and Greeks alike about Jesus. And in the marketplace, he spoke to anybody who would listen. You have to hear about Jesus. He was killed, but he came back to life. Paul's words stirred up a group of Athenian thinkers. These men felt that they could uh, achieve perfection through knowledge and wisdom. Can you explain what this fellow is chattering about? He seems to be telling us about gods we've never heard of. We shall take this Paul to a meeting of the Areopagus. There, we shall reason it out. Set high on an outcropping of rock, the Areopagus was the high court of Athens. And from this viewpoint, Paul could see all of Athens spread out below him. Closer at hand, the gathered Epicureans and Stoics studied Paul. What is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. Hmm, we would like to know what they mean. Paul took a deep breath. 
these people treated new ideas like playthings. So he wanted to connect the story of Jesus with something they already knew. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. We are aware of this, please proceed. Paul recalled a small carved altar he had discovered while exploring the city. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. Now, I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. Paul explained to them that the true God created the entire world and everything in it. He created each individual person with a purpose and an adventure to live. He did it so that people would seek him and find him, even though he is not far from any of us. Preposterous. Continue. Paul knew that these Athenians might listen to the words of their own writers that might actually reflect something of who God is. In him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have also said, we are his children. Uh, an interesting point. Paul told them that people are God's children. God is alive and real, not some carved statue or molded from gold. And now by sending Jesus, God was telling everyone everywhere to turn away from the bad things they've done and to follow him. God has proved this to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. Preposterous! Fascinating. More like fantasy. Get this joker out of here. No, 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 no. This is new, uh, fresh. We will hear you speak about this again sometime. A man called Dionysius had been among the crowd at the Areopagus. He hurried to catch up as Paul left. I want to know more about this living God, about Jesus. I can help you, friend. So Paul continued to spread the good news and love of Jesus. And after a short time, Dionysius became a follower of Jesus, as well as a woman named Damaris and several others. I know it's a banana, but it just looks like a blurry yellow blob. Whoa! It's hard to focus when you can't see clearly, but I think it's important to try and see things from another person's point of view, like Paul and the people in Athens. They believed in different gods than Paul. That's why Paul tried to see things how they saw things, so he could tell them about Jesus in a way they'd understand. He told them about the living one true God who created the whole world and everything in it. And he told them that God proved how powerful he was by bringing a man back from the dead. That man was God's son, Jesus. Many of the people from Athens had never heard of anything like that before. Some thought Paul was kinda crazy, but others wanted to hear more. And Paul was able to help them know Jesus the way he knew Jesus. That's something we can do too! It's the one thing to remember today. You can help others know Jesus. That can be easy if you're talking to someone who sees things the same way you do. But when someone sees things differently, when they believe differently, or when they've had different experiences than you, it helps to try and see things from their point of view. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying now. The best thing to do is to try to keep it real. Be honest about what Jesus has done for you. And it's not just in what you say. You can help people know Jesus by what you do, too. When you treat people with love, respect, and kindness, they can see the love of Jesus through you. Everyone's different, and we all see things just a little bit differently. So I think it makes sense to try to see things the way other people see them. And you don't even have to change your glasses to do it. I'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys later. Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, that's a table. All right. In our story today, Paul and the Athenians had a very interesting discussion. The Athenians were very religious, but they worshiped idols, things made of sticks and stones, gems, wood, they didn't worship the living God. And so Paul introduced them to the living God and to Jesus and the fact that Jesus came to die for us and that God raised him from the dead. Paul preached to large crowds. He preached to, to Jews, to Greeks, 
He preached in the marketplace, and he also talked one-on-one -on -one with people. There are many ways that we can share Jesus with others. Maybe you can give out a tract or a bookmark with a verse on it. Maybe you can give out a Bible that someone can read on their own time. Maybe you can tell someone how to get saved using a wordless book or a wordless bracelet. Maybe you can invite them to church, or maybe you can show them who Jesus is by the way you live, by being kind and honoring and respectful, thankful. Uh, these things all show Jesus to others, and then you can use that when they say, hey, why are you different? Then you can tell them why you're different, that Jesus saved you and the Holy Spirit now lives with you. God has a job for every one of us who have accepted Jesus as our Savior to do, and that's to tell others that they too can have Jesus as their Savior. Our verse for the month is Ephesians 2, 8. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Let's try that with motions. I know they're corny, but it helps. Ready? God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Ephesians 2, 8. All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you again for the kids who watched this week. Thank you that they want to know you and help them to tell others about you and about Jesus. Please protect them and keep them healthy and safe and bring them back to church soon. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. On Sundays, don't forget to pick up your bags. They have lots of fun things in them, and we hope to see you soon.